So she got in touch with me from LinkedIn. It was the start of a friendship. She's um, a Chinese lady here in the States. That spanned for months. She just wanted information about America and Western civilization, and then we basically chatted daily. But as the weeks went on, one question remained. Yeah, there's the old saying, too good to be true. Was she real? So I said, you, would you like to FaceTime? And she said, yes. Wow, that shows how long you guys talked for. My goodness. Yes. Concerned about retaliation, our source did not want to show his face, but wanted to tell his story. We'll call him Kevin. Yeah, so she asked after about a day or so on LinkedIn if she could, if we could switch to WhatsApp. Kevin and Chang Yan began talking in January 2023. We were not able to independently verify the photos, and they could be of someone else. That's why we're hiding her identity. This is basically how I started, like, this is, uh, she's me a picture of herself. He was cautious, but intrigued. Because there was always that tingling in the back of my mind that, you know, there's something not right here. The more they talked, the more he learned, like where she lived. She said she lived in San Francisco in Pacific Heights. Her history. She had come here supposedly after she'd been divorced. And her job. She was a financial trader. It's how she paid for her lavish lifestyle. She was showing me her house and her clothes and the stuff for material goods. So at that point, I was thinking, well, how, why would a wealthy person be one of his scammy? His trust grew as their communication moved to voice memos. It's very nice to hear your voice. Um, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Good night. Then FaceTime. So it was her when you were FaceTiming. Yep. So that was very convincing. And I actually asked her about how she was doing investment and she offered to teach me. I said, oh, sure, I'd love to learn. Were you involved in crypto before this at all? No, I had just heard about it. She claimed to know when to buy crypto to make a profit. She had an uncle who had inside trader information. She spent hours showing Kevin how to sign up for crypto and invest through these detailed instructions. She was suggesting that I only do a minimum amount um, so I could feel comfortable. And I'm like, okay, at this point, I'm like, I can, I'll risk 1700 bucks and we'll see what happens. While texting, they watched the market. She tells me now buy. And I clicked the buy button and ended up making $388 profit. A few days later, her uncle got another tip. Kevin said he'd do another 1700 And she came back and said, oh, is there, isn't there supposed to be a zero on the end of that? And I said, 17000 I said, no way. Like, are you crazy? She got upset. And tell me that I'm not being, not taking risks and nobody gets anywhere in life without taking risks. Kevin's trust dwindled as she applied more pressure. I mean, at that point, I'm thinking, well, maybe I'd go to the FBI. I don't know. Kevin didn't end up going to the FBI, but we did. But I've worked all basically every threat that cyber has to offer. In the world of cyber and counterterrorism threats. My niche is hacking the mind of a hacker. Special Agent Hassani has seen it all. But in 2021, he began seeing a new scam, pig butchering. But it just refers to raising little piglets, fattening them up and butchering them. And they're fattening up their victim with illusions of grandeur, of wealth, of love before bleeding them dry. Pig butchering, or what the FBI has kindly coined confidence scams. We have a much nicer uh, title for it. it. Are a combination of two popular cons. Investment scams and romance scams. Pig butchering starts long before you may think. Um, but with technology, where we are today, all our information is out there. And the criminals harvest this information. Before they make contact, they typically know quite a bit about the person. Like your vulnerabilities. If I find out that you're a religious person, I can exploit your faith. And once you start to become suspicious of me, I can use God as an example of, hey, God brought us together. I don't know why you're resisting. They also prey on the sick and the lonely. If you have cancer, I can pose as somebody who has cancer. Then they reach out. Unsolicited contact. Have you ever gotten a text message that just reads hi from an unknown number? LinkedIn, dating apps, text messages, and more. These are all ways pig butcherers make contact, and once you respond, they stay in touch. Pig butchering is a long game. The idea is to cultivate trust, which takes time. During that time, the scammer often does exactly what Kevin saw. 
They start with usually a DM and then they move to WhatsApp. Messages on the app WhatsApp are encrypted. So even if we subpoena WhatsApp, all we can really see is their contact information. The scammer poses as someone wealthy who knows finance and can teach you how to invest. But a big part of the scam is using crypto. It's a way for the bad guys to launder money and get it overseas quickly. They get the crypto cash by directing the victim to move it. But I then have you send it to another wallet, and then to another wallet, and then to another wallet, and that last wallet would be mine. So who are these scammers really? Is this organized crime? Yes. <laughs> Between groups? Yes. It's not just like one scam? No. And a lot of times the scammers, believe it or not, are victims themselves. They apply for a job and they show up and it's this ring, so to speak, and they're stuck and they're given the script and they're told they're going to do it. And it's a full-time job. They must have worked hours and hours on this story. Extremely detailed. Luckily, Kevin caught on just in time. So I did call her out and I said, you know, I think you're scamming me. He never invested more money. Now he's learned if he did, he likely would have lost it. So what they do is they get you to invest a small sum, they get your confidence up, and then they take it from you the second time. But could Chang be real if he FaceTimed with her? We gave Chang's information to the FBI to investigate. A few weeks later, Kevin got a letter warning him of the potential scam. Others don't walk away so lucky. Special Agent Hassani said he's seen people give their life savings, millions, to these pig butcherers. Once they have the money, if they get all of it, they spend it. And that's why it's crucial to report this as soon as a victim is even remotely suspicious. You can report by going online to ic3.gov. This happens every day. It's, it's a multi-billion dollar enterprise. It's going to continue. Even though Kevin walked away ahead of the game, he's sharing his story in hopes others become wary of the scam. Just don't even mess with them. They need to learn that they just can't take money from everybody. Man, they were on to them.